Okay, hi Booktube, Aaron here, hope you're doing okay. Today I've got some catching up to do. I'm going to be wrapping up um, everything I read in December and also everything I read in January. Um, in, in, in December, because I was like wrapping up the year and stuff like that, it kind of stole the spotlight from my December wrap up. And so, because I was feeling a little bad <laughs> for the books I read in December, I thought I would include them. Uh, with the books I read in January as well. There's also a, a bit of a little book haul in here as well, so that'll come through about halfway through the, the books I read. I, I'm, I'm hoping it will make sense as I go through it. Um, and then before I go, I'll talk a little bit about my reading plans for February. Um, so let's start off with what I read in December. First off, we've got Dubliners by uh, by James Joyce. I, I was hoping to do a bit of a like a reading series on this. I was going to try and read a few, um, just read a few of the stories out um, you know, for you here on Booktube. And unfortunately, I mean, for, for the best part of December, I was away traveling. And then once I was back, I was sick and the internet went down. So th th those plans kind of went out the window, but I was still able to read Dubliners. And I, I really, really loved it. There's this really lovely, homely feeling uh, to so many of the stories. Just from the, the first story from um, from the sisters, there's, there's just something to it that just feels really, just really homely and really, just really familiar uh, for some reason. Um, and, you know, the stories, they didn't all <laughs> make sense to me. A couple of them I, I read a few times. Um, but, yeah, I think The, the, the Dead is, is still my favourite. I just love that story. And it, it felt like last year that story was just following me around. I, I, I listened to a few things about it and it just kept on coming up in a few different places. Um, and so it, it really felt like last year The Dead was one of those stories that I inhabited for a little while um, which is really really cool um, but yeah I'm, I'm going to read Dubliners again next uh, December I think it's going to hopefully turn into a bit of a tradition for me to to read these stories in the, in the run up to Christmas every single year. Uh, next up we've got a collection of poetry by Sylvia Plath this is Crossing the Water uh, and these are poems that she wrote between the Colossus, which was the collection that she published when she was alive, and Ariel, which was published shortly after her death. Um, so these are very much transitional poems. Some of them are, are really, really good. I, I read probably my favourite in there, that the title poem, Crossing the Water, for a Poetry Thursday video. So I'll pop that, like a link to it up for you so that you can um, just get a taste um, of that poem if you'd like to. Um, some some of the other poems weren't quite as successful. Some of them have felt like like fairly over writing exercises. Some of them kind of felt like journal entries that had just been sliced into poems, um, which I've never really found before with with Sylvia Plath. Uh, but then again, it was a you know it's it's an unpu you know it was unpublished for quite a while, um, and so and they are quite you know it is a very transitional period so. You know, I'm I'm not going to be too 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 hard on it because the the poems that really work in here do, really really work, um. So yeah, I'm still really impressed with crossing the water and um, yeah, particularly that title poem is just really really good. And then really the the big project um for my reading in December was the Karamazov Brothers by Dostoevsky. Um, this is the first thing by Dostoevsky that I've ever read, um, and I yeah I, I really enjoyed it. I I didn't love it. It wasn't a, a five star read for me, but it was really really interesting. Uh, for for me, the the sections on on religion were probably actually my favourite bits, where these people are where, where the characters are having these really long, <laughs> digressive theological and philosophical um, sort of conversations. For me, they they were my favourite bits. And it felt like all of these conversations about religion, about God and about um, sort of all that sort of stuff, uh, it's always directed towards justice and how we're to treat each other. It always sort of ends up there, uh, which sort of ties in nicely to the plot. Um, but um, yeah, it was a really interesting book, a, a book that I'd like to get back to and just wrestle with again 
Um, but there is something to Dostoevsky's voice that I really enjoy. And uh, as a writer, um, I just enjoy just the just the way the words come across. There's a kind of dark humour there that um, really resonates with me. So I, I enjoy Dostoevsky, and I'm yeah going to keep on <laughs> sort of wading through his work. Um, and then this is the point where the book haul kind of comes in. Um, and it'll, it's going to sort of transition into what I read in January. And I, I picked up a few books um, and I've been trying to take notes of when I pick up a book and whether I read it or not. So these first three are books I've picked up and <laughs> I haven't read yet, but um, we'll, we'll see if I do manage to read them this year. Uh, so we've got The Man of Fifty by uh, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, or... <laughs> I should just say Goethe um, and not make a fool of myself. Um, but yeah, I think this is just a story about a, an older man who uh, who um, sort of promises himself to a younger woman and it's like a weird love triangle is the impression I get. Um, but I've, I've never read anything by Goethe and this this is quite slim. Um, so we'll, we'll see what I think of him. Uh, another writer that I, I don't think I've read anything by, it's uh, Guida Maupassant. I hope I'm saying it okay. This is Pierre and Jean, and it's just a story of, of two brothers, I think, and how their relationship sort of changes over time. Um, yeah, I, again, uh, I just picked it up because it's a writer I've heard you know good things about. I might have read a short story by him, uh, but again, it's you know quite a slim thing, so I'm getting a taste of, of a new author, and I'll just see whether I get on with him or not. And then next up, we've got Hamlet by William Shakespeare. I don't really need <laughs> um, uh, an, an, another edition of Shakespeare. I've got a big, fat, uh, Norton uh, critical edition of the complete plays. I've got the complete works of William Shakespeare on my Kindle. But I, I, I had to justify it <laughs> to myself somehow. And it's got a, a, a massive introduction. It's got tons of notes. And so... If I was to do a deep dive into Hamlet, I'm sure I'd get a lot of use out of this. Um, so maybe this is a Shakespeare play that I will um, get back to this year and, and read again. Um, because I, yeah, I think I've only read Hamlet once and it must have been quite a, quite a while ago. Um, so I'd yeah, quite like to give it a go and it's just nice to have all of this extra stuff in this edition. Um, and then the one book that I picked up in January that I did read, and I picked it up um, intentionally for Historathon, which is a, a really, really cool reading event going on this year, where every quarter we're um, reading books from a, a different period. And I wasn't too sure whether I wanted to join in, and that's mainly because I don't read a lot of history. I would, I would love to read much more history, and I'm hoping that um, just by joining in here and there with Historathon, I'm able to sort of build up a bit of a momentum in my history reading. And so I, I went to a bookshop um, sort of deliberately to go to the history section, look you know, for books in the period uh, that we're reading, so up until the year 500, and um, just see whether there's anything that sounded interesting that I might want to read. And I picked up Rubicon. The Triumph and Tragedy of the Roman Republic by Tom Holland. And um, yeah, I, I don't really know too much. Well, <laughs> before reading this, I didn't know too much about the Roman Republic. Um, and I knew bits and bobs, um, <laughs> mainly through Shakespeare. <laughs> um, and so I yeah, just wanted to get just a rough view of, of what happened, what it was like. And how that evolved in, into the you know, the later Roman Empire, um, and it was it was really really good. It took I'd say about a hundred pages for me to get comfortable with the pacing. He kind of speeds through most of the history of the Roman Republic, and then he um, really focuses on the last century or so. And you, uh, you know, with with, with Caesar and with um, Cicero and you know all, all those sort of famous figures and, and Pompey and, and everybody. Um, and it was it was really really good. I would I would probably re read it again. Maybe, I mean, we've still got another two months. Maybe I'll read it again in February and March. Um, but just the um, 
I, I suppose that there's the, the narrative, just the, the way that Tom Holland kind of deals with it, the writing style is just really engaging. It gets you just feeling really involved. You really want to know what happens next, almost as if it's uh, a thriller or something like that. It, it felt like a thriller to me. And, and so, yeah, it, it really got me excited about the period, which is, I suppose, for a book of history like this, is, you know, a big thumbs up. Um, so, yeah, I'm really, I felt really excited um, after reading this. And, um, yeah, I'm hoping that I'll, I'll get a few more uh, history books read this year um, with, with the really kind help of, you know, everybody um, taking part in, in Historathon. And then with that, I'll segue into the other books that I read in January. Um, so I think, yeah, the first book I finished uh, this year was Villette by Charlotte Bronte. Uh, so every year, uh, well, actually, we, we do it twice a year. Uh, me and my wife do a bit of a, a book swap. So I'll, um, I'll pick a book for her that I've enjoyed and, and she'll do the same for me. Um, and I've never read Villette. Um, and I thought it was OK. It... it um, Let's, let's see. <laughs> in, in, in some sections, I think it did have some of Charlotte Bronte's best writing. There are other sections where it felt like we had some of her worst. <laughs> so it was a bit of a mixed bag. Um, and it felt quite abstract at times as well. Um, I didn't feel completely engaged in every area of the story. Um, but no, it, it didn't. it didn't feel like a Bronte book to me. I mean, I have only read Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights. I, I need to read some Anne Bronte at some point. That's another another thing for this year, perhaps. Um, but no, it, it, it didn't really feel like a, a Bronte book to me. It, it felt like a very tame, kind of watery Anne Radcliffe pastiche, um, which isn't necessarily a, 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 an insult. Uh, I don't mean it completely in a bad way. Um, I just came to it with preconceptions and you know, it didn't meet those preconceptions. So it's, it's still a decent book. I still enjoyed it. There's some really wonderful sections, there are bits that made me laugh and smile. There are bits that made me sit bolt upright because it was, you know, sort of some you know, sort of random sort of shocking passages. But um, yeah, it wasn't completely what I was expecting. Uh, next up, uh, this came up in my library tour, which I think will come up just before this. I haven't worked out which one I'll pop up first. It's the Kalevala, so it's a Finnish epic. So I was reading this through December. I finished it in January. And it was, yeah, it was just really, really fun. I, I think I, I talk about it a little bit more um, in, in the bookshelf thing. But, uh, excuse me, to, to go through some stuff that I didn't talk about there. It is, uh, the, there are a few heroes kind of dotted around. They kind of have their own tribes and things like that. And it's it's just all the mischief that they get up to, really. Um, the, the main character is uh, called Vainan Naaman, I, I want to say. I'm not sure if I'm, correcting it, if I'm correcting his pronouncement right. If I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Um, and he's, the, the really cool thing with the Kalevala is that the magic is is poetry, is is song. So if someone, um, you know, wants to, I, I don't know, if someone wants to cross a, a fiery pit, they have a song that they can sing, uh, so that a blizzard will come down and cover the fiery pit with snow, and then they can get over, and and, and things like that. And and Vena Narman has become the most powerful wizard by learning all of the songs and all of the lore and all of the poems. Um, of the area um, and so that's just one of the really just really cool things about it is um, just that you get the impression from the, the society because these were oral folk tales and, and was well, a, a sung epic just the place that song and poetry had you know in the culture is really really cool um, but yeah it, they're really weird <laughs> crazy stories there's nothing else quite like uh, the Kalevala. Uh, and then at the end of last year and then beginning of this year, I really knuckled down on reading some more Borges. And um, it was it was really, really fun, particularly towards the end, actually. And um, it was, um, 
I got about halfway through and then I read the, the second half in the probably the last few weeks of the year and the first couple of weeks of January. Um, and I think that the, the strongest things that Borges wrote were in uh, in fictions, um, also all the famous stories like uh, Talon, like uh, the Garden of Fork and Path, like uh, the Library of Babel. Um, those stories do, I think they do shine much brighter than anything else he wrote. Um, one of the interesting things I found was that towards the middle, his, his stories feel like they're, he's kind of reshaping the way that he tells a story. And I'm wondering whether that's to do with his eyesight. I know that he, um, by the end of the, his life, he was blind. And so his eyesight was just getting worse and worse and worse the older he got. Um, and he ended up having to just dictate his stories and then they were written down. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering whether, you know, he basically, I'm supposing he must have just had to kind of relearn how to write in, in a way. I'm, and it kind of felt like in the middle, he's still trying to work out what direction he's going to go now that he's having to change his approach. Um, and initially it's not always too successful. There's some really interesting stuff that comes out of that. But then at, at the end, some of the later stories are just really, really amazing. So, you know, he got firing on all cylinders and, and then some towards the end. Next up, we've got some poetry. We've got Alice Oswald, uh, the thing in the Gapstone style. And um, yeah, it was just a really solid poetry collection. Um, I, I really love Alice Oswald. Um, not everything in here I loved, uh, but there was some really in interesting stuff. Uh, this was her, her first poetry collection and um, there's lots of quite formal stuff in here uh, which is quite cool to see. I think her her style has become a, a little, uh, well, well looser is not quite the right wor word but it, it's not strictly formal anymore. Um, but there are sonnets in here and, and other things like that that um, just seem so, so natural. Um, it, it's hard to get across exactly what it feels like but they, they don't feel strained they don't feel dusty and neither do they do they don't really feel that experimental either it doesn't feel like she's trying to do something completely different they just feel like their poems just being what they're supposed to be uh, which is my my favorite kind of poem so um yeah I'd, I'd recommend this it's not my favorite thing that i've read by alice oswald i think her more recent collection uh, falling awake is probably my favorite thing that I've read by her uh, but this is this is really really good too and then next up we've got uh, the looking glass sisters by Coriel Gabrielson and this is just a, a short little um, I suppose psychological thriller about two sisters who who live together and it's a, um, a situation where one of them is um, uh, what, I think the younger sister is paralysed from uh, the, the hips down. Uh, I'm not sure, she's not completely paralysed. She can kind of uh, get by, but it's very strenuous. It takes her a long time to you know, get down the corridors. And uh, she has she has crutches. I don't know why she doesn't have a wheelchair or something. I, I, I don't know. But um, yeah, she, she gets by on crutches and her sister is looking after her. Um, and then you, you get the impression as... Well, initially you get the impression uh, that the sister um, living with the paralysis is really whiny and very demanding. Um, and <laughs> you feel, because she's your narrator, you feel like you're, you know, you're, you're going to be in for a lot of whining. Um, but then, you know, it kind of turns over and you start seeing that the, the sister that's caring for her is actually kind of quite cruel. And I suppose you can understand that, that there may be some some grievances there that you know she's given up her life to care for her sister, um, but she does seem unnecessarily cruel. Um, and then she meets a man, and as the relationship with the man de develops, she's giving in more and more to um, I suppose just the physical side of herself. And then you know the the, the sister with uh, the paralysis is. Our narrator is is more of the intellectual side, um, and it's kind of a, a battle, you know, between the bodily needs and a a, a well nurtured uh, intellectual life. 
I suppose, is, is kind of what ends up happening as the book develops. So it was, it was really quite interesting. Um, again, it's in that liked but didn't love kind of category. Um, but if, if you ever see it, it's, it's really short and, and it's, it's definitely worth the read if you do happen to come across it. And then finally, I, I just finished this um, well, last night in, in, in the wee hours of the morning. It's The Machine Stops by E.M. Forster. I, I read it on my Kindle uh, because I've been very conscious that I, I don't read that much on my Kindle and I'm trying to find more ways uh, to read on there. Um, and I, I knew I had The Machine Stops um, downloaded on my Kindle, so I, I thought I'd give it a go. I have read it before, uh, about five years ago or so. Um, and I <laughs> looked back at back. I looked back at my um, at my Goodreads review for it, and I only gave it three stars, which, you know, it's, it's middling. Um, but I I really loved it the second time through. Um, there's um, it's just that kind of, I think it's the perfect length story of just just shy of about fifty pages. Um, the, the ideas in there are really really great. And, um, you know, and the idea is, well, what is it that the machine represents? You know, there's these people living underground with a machine that just caters to their every needs and they're absolutely dependent on it. And um, for, for us, I suppose, reading now, maybe our first instinct would be s social media technology and stuff like that and the way we're just total addicts to it. Um, but maybe it's, it's any system, you know, any machine that just has us totally enthralled any any system that we just become dependent on um, and then it's about having to quite violent have yeah quite violently pull yourself away from it and just how different and how odd that is um so yeah it's, it's a really really great story um and I, I was struck by the fact that a lot of the actual action that happens particularly towards the end you don't really see and is kind of confused and you're not entirely sure exactly what's happened or how or why but it's happened <laughs> so don't know if that makes sense but I was yeah kind of struck by that kind of off stage uh, off stage action that kind of happens towards the end and then as I go into February um, I'll, I'll go in with just a couple of the things that are ongoing uh, that I've been reading this month um, and so I've been reading Proust again, so I'm reading volume three, uh, which is The Gaumont's Way, um, and I'm about 200 pages through, I think, 260 pages through, um, and it, yeah, it's, it's been good, it's been nice to reacquaint myself with Proust after a, a little break, um, sort of over the uh, Christmas period, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll just see how, how it goes, I, I don't have too much to report on Proust right now, but um, yeah, it's good to have picked him up again. And I've been reading the complete poems of William Blake, uh, about three quarters, no, <laughs> got it backwards, I'm about a quarter of the way through. I've been finding the notes are not only useful, but uh, necessary. <laughs> so I've got a bookmark for the actual poetry, and then I've got a bookmark for the notes as well. Um, and I'm up to... I'm up to the four Zoas now, um, so that's quite a long one, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. But it's, it's been really, really interesting, and seeing how his kind of, prof yeah, his prophetic kind of apocalyptic poems are, I suppose, his way of sort of processing what's happening intellectually and just happening historically, you know, in his period with... Uh, the American Revolution and the Rus uh, and with the um, French Revolution as well, um, and so this idea of, of of liberty is really important to him, and yet he feels like within his own culture in um, in in England in London, everyone is restrained by by, by religion and by um, convention and you know all, all of that sort of stuff, and uh, that that kind of tension is. You know, really there, and he's trying to get rid of it. And this mythology that he's he's writing through is his way of kind of dealing with it and expressing uh, this 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 tension and this um, this anger that he's feeling. So, yeah, it's it's been really really fascinating, um, and I'm only going to get deeper. So we'll we'll see where it goes from there. 
and then I've just got my uh, the rest of my February reading plans so a lot of it will be Proust and William Blake. I'm also going to be reading The, uh, the Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. This is going to be a, a reread for me and I'm reading it with Alan uh, from Big Hard Books and Classics. So I'm yeah looking forward to rereading it and also really looking forward to reading something with Alan as well. And then before I go, I've just got a pile of possibilities to yeah just, just try and fit in to my February reading. Um, I have a feeling like with um, the Booktube Prize, that's probably going to fill up a bit more time as well. I'm not sure exactly when I'll do my reading for that, but um, if I end up judging the first round, that'll take up a bit more time. Um, however, these are four poetry books that I'd like to maybe try and fit in, or I might just try and have them just around in the house so that when I'm in the mood for some poetry, I'll just pick up one of these and just, just read something randomly. Um, first up, we've got Rambo's, uh, Arthur Rambo's Collected Poems, and, and um, yeah, he, he, he seems to come up whenever people talk about um, Baudelaire and, and that kind of era of, of French poetry. It, it interests me, but I haven't spent much time uh, there yet, so I've, I've read a bit of Baudelaire, so I'd like to read some Rambo. Uh, we've got W.H. Auden's Selected Poems. He's, he's been on my mind. Oh, something just fell out. Um, he, he's been on my mind recently. I can't say um, exactly why, um, but maybe it's just a sign I need to, to need to read some Auden. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I don't know whether I'll dip into him or just find myself <laughs> going in for a bit of a deep dive. Um, then we've got uh, Marina Sveti... I, I've had a while to practice saying her name, but I haven't said it correctly yet. Um, Svetayeva and her selected poems, uh, so a Russian poet who, who lived through uh, the revolution and through Stalinism. So there'll probably be quite a lot of quite heavy stuff there. And then New and Collected Poems by George Surtzis, or uh, Surtz, um, and um, yeah, just a, a poet that I'm intrigued by. I've read a few things by and have been really impressed, and so... Um, I found his collected poems and thought, yeah, well, <laughs> I may as well give him a go. So there's quite a lot here to go through. Uh, so this might be a good one just to just to dip into when I'm in the mood for something different and changing up my um, my reading pace. So there we go. I hope this hasn't gone on for too long because I tried to cover quite a lot in one video. Um, but yeah, I hope you've you know enjoyed, found it interesting, and I hope you have a really lovely February and um, that you enjoy everything that you read. So for now, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.